Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an HP NVX2, which in a lot of ways looks like a typical portable notebook, and in a lot of ways that's exactly what it is. It has an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 pixel display, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, a 64 gigabyte solid state disk, and an Intel Atom Clover Trail processor, and runs Windows 8 software. And uh, that Clover Trail chip is a little bit faster than sort of older Intel Atom processors, but not nearly as fast as even a Celeron chip, let alone a Core i3 or something along those lines. Really what it's meant to do is prioritize battery life over performance, and that does happen pretty well here. You get around 12 hours or more of battery life, depending on what you're doing when you're using this laptop. But it's not just a laptop, it's also a tablet. And unlike some hybrid devices here that run Windows 8 and have tablet and laptop portions, uh, the laptop portion isn't an option, it comes standard. So when you buy this device, what you're getting is a laptop and a tablet combined. The uh, tablet portion has the processor, memory, RAM, uh, uh, storage, everything sort of built into it. And you can see we've got this little start button here. We've got the ability to switch apps using touchscreen gestures and all your basics. On the back, there's a power button, volume buttons, an 8 megapixel camera. On the front is a 720p camera for shooting uh, video or doing video chat or something along those lines. Along the sides of the device, we've got full-size HDMI, a USB port, an audio jack. On the other side, SDHC card, charging, and USB for a total of two, two USB ports. And you may notice that I actually lifted it from here. So that uh, hinge, that connector is pretty solid and all you have to do is sort of pull the slider here, take it out, and it should slide right back into place. One thing I forgot to mention here is below the edge-to-edge -edge glass on the screen, there's uh, front-facing speakers. So you should always be able to hear when you're using this uh, to listen to music or watch videos or do something along those lines. Not super loud, and they are sort of like cheap laptop speakers, so the frequency range is not ideal, but they'll do in a pinch. I do find that it's a little bit difficult to open this thing sometimes. Uh, it holds tight, a little too tight, so you sort of have to use two hands. And you'll notice as you open it that this hinge on the rear actually extends downward, pulls up the tablet or the uh, keyboard a little bit so it's floating in the air. So you've got a nice little angle when you're typing. Um, it's a little bit weird that every time you do that, the base sort of goes up and down, but it works reasonably well and holds things pretty firmly into place. Doesn't go back real far, just about that far, but you can adjust it to, to a certain degree, unlike some keyboard docks that we've seen. The um, touchscreen is pretty responsive. It uh, works nicely, especially when you're holding it in your hands. When you're uh, poking at the screen and it's used in the keyboard dock, it wobbles a little bit. In terms of overall performance, um, the tablet mode works pretty nicely. Uh, so let's go ahead and load, launch a couple of tablet apps. You'll see that they load pretty quickly. Connect to the internet. You can switch between apps. You can pin apps to the side of the screen and so forth. And so in a lot of ways it does everything that say a Windows RT tablet would do, at least as well as Windows RT tablet. Also, oops basically goes to sleep and resumes from sleep instantly. Um, you can access applications from the Microsoft Windows Store and uh, most of these apps that are available for Windows RT and Windows 8 tablets are going to run pretty well on this device. Uh, supports some pretty, uh, it takes a little getting used to some of the gestures, but once you do get used to the gestures, they're pretty easy to use for switching applications, snapping applications, making applications go away, and closing applications. Um, a couple of games are available. Let's go ahead and load Cut the Rope here. Not the best score I've ever had in that round. Let's try that again. Even worse, not my uh, forte, but you can see that casual games play pretty well. Now in terms of desktop style applications, uh, what really sort of sets this apart from say a Windows RT tablet or an Android tablet 
um, is that it's going to be able to run full desktop software. So we've got the desktop version of the Google Chrome web browser here, complete with plugins. You can use touch-based gestures or the touchpad to interact with it. And for the most part, things, you know, basic tasks like surfing the web are going to work pretty well. Uh, you can also play HD video um, and uh, perform other basic computing tasks. But what you'll notice here is I've only got three tabs open and now it's suddenly becoming a little bit unresponsive. I tap and it takes a while for the tabs to register. And that's sort of the limitation of the Intel Atom processor. Uh, when you're running one app at a time in full screen mode and they're optimized for Windows 8, they run pretty well. When you're trying to use this as a full-fledged PC, um, unlike many tablets that have been released over the last couple of years, you can run Microsoft Office or LibreOffice or other full desktop applications, Photoshop if you want, iTunes if you want, um, but they're not necessarily going to run super fast. So among other things that I've tested on here, I've um, done some audio and video transcoding tests. These are things that really use the CPU to its limits. And while this device is a little bit faster than last year's Intel Atom based netbooks, it's not nearly as fast as uh, something like um, an Asus VivoBook X202, which has a Core i3 processor and sells for $499. And that brings me to sort of the biggest problem with this device. It's kind of neat if you're looking for a tablet that also in a pinch can run Windows applications, uh, full desktop Windows applications. It's kind of neat if you're looking for a, a laptop that you can occasionally pull off the screen and use to read a book or watch a video but it's kind of expensive. Uh, HP charges $850 for this. You can occasionally find a better deal on it, but $850 for that price, you could buy a portable notebook and a tablet and get a better experience out of both of them. So it's a little bit of a tough sell. If this thing were a couple hundred dollars less, it would be much easier to recommend than it is at $850. Um, so, you know, I've been using it on and off over the last couple of weeks as a primary work machine where I'll take it to a coffee shop or use it uh, around the house to try and get some work done. And as a Windows notebook computer, it just starts to feel sluggish way too quickly. Um, it's great that it has battery life that's going to last for a very long time, but if, uh, if it's kind of a pain to use, it's, eh, it's a little bit problematic. If you really just wanted sort of a Windows uh, or if you just wanted a tablet type experience, um, the tablet style applications do work really pretty nicely here. Um, but there's not as many tablet friendly applications available for Windows 8 as there are for other platforms yet. So you might be better off going for an Android tablet or an iPad if what you really want is a tablet based operating experience experience. Um, in the future that could change and there are some really nice applications here. This uh, news application for instance I really like for uh, sort of reading full screen news content. And you know I, I definitely think that this is a useful device. It's just uh, it would be a much more useful and easily justifiable device at $500 or $600 as opposed to $850. So as the price comes down in the future on this type of device I think they might become more useful. Um, or if you're looking for a more powerful device with a, a Core i3 based processor, you know, I think either the prices on these need to come down or the performance needs to go up while the price stays about the same. But as it is right now, the HP Envy X2 is an interesting toy if you happen to uh, have a lot of money burning a hole in your pocket. Um, as it is, it's at best a secondary computer with the price of a primary computer. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a quick video review of the HP Envy X2. You can find more details about this tablet notebook hybrid at lilliputing.com.